Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some retelling romance recommendations. I have 10 books that I'm going to be talking about today that are retellings in some form or fashion. I love retellings okay because I feel like as romance readers we one of the reasons we love romance is because we love the security and knowing that there is going to be a happy ending and with retellings I feel like there's even a more added element of security because the story is familiar to you in some way if you know the original so I love retellings and so I have a wide range in here we have a few Beauty and the Beast um just like Disney in general and just some other ones thrown in there so I'm really excited to share those today. I want to start out with the Beauty and the Beast retelling. At first I have Heart of the Fae by Emma Hamm. I haven't talked about this book in a while and that is such a shame because this is one of my favorite fantasy romance books. This book starts out with our heroine named Sorsha who is a midwife. She's trying to take care of her father who is dying. There's this sickness going around her entire village and she has no idea how to heal them and so she's devastated when she realizes her father has gotten sick with the same illness. She is desperate for answers and so she goes to this river I think where this enchanted witch lives not thinking that she'll actually be there because she doesn't really believe in it but when this witch shows up she is shocked and she explains the situation and the witch is like okay I will give you the cure to cure your father in exchange, you go to this magical island and find the long lost fey prince named Aemon. If you can see on the cover, this is him. And if you can tell, there's like these scars and geodes coming out of his body. So Aemon is a part of the fey and um, they're very much known for being perfect. Like a lot of other fey books, like fey revere perfection. Aemon is kicked out of his kingdom when he's sparring with his brother one day and he gets nicked by his brother's sword while they're fighting. After that nick, scars pop up in his body and geodes come out of him as well. His family is disgusted, the Fae are disgusted, and so they shun him to this island that's kind of like the island of misfits where all other Fae magical creatures have been outcasts. And so he is now kind of like the king of the outcasts. And when Sorsha comes to this island to like convince him to come back to the mainland with her, he is adamant on refusing um, because of how poorly he's been treated. And so this is very loosely Beauty and the Beast based, but it's one of my favorite Beauty and the Beast retellings. It's so magical and whimsical, and you could totally see the ode to Beauty and the Beast between Sorsha and Aemon because, man, is he a grumpy grump? <laughs> And she just wants to save her father's life like so badly and um, through them bickering and fighting they get to know one another in this forced proximity situation because she's living in this castle with him and it's one of my favorite fantasy romances. Next I have a whole series. This is the Wicked Villains series by Katie Robert. If you're new to the romance genre you probably don't know about these books. These are all kind of like Disney-esque retellings if that makes sense. I'll like go in order of what the retellings are really fast. So first Desperate Measures is a um Aladdin retelling but oh I forgot to mention each book in the series is about like a good guy a part of the story falling for a villain in the tale that's why it's called the Wicked Villain series so book one is about Jasmine and Jafar. Learn My Lesson is a romance between Hercules, Meg, and Hades. It's an MMF romance that's the only book ooh, that I own physically from that series thanks to Rachel she got me this book and we love this one. This one is one of my favorite MMFs I love it. My favorite in the series though is A Worthy Opponent, which is a romance between Tinkerbell and Hook. Um, there's also, I want to mention, no like magical elements to this series. It's just like personifications, I feel like, of the characters themselves into real people and they all coalesce and either work at or go to this certain club, okay, club that Hades owns and yeah, I just want to leave it at that. There's no magical elements in these books. So like Hook is not falling for a fairy that's this big <laughs> in this book, okay? Uh, book four is The Beast, which is a romance, another MMF between um, like Gaston, The Beast, and Belle. Again, The Beast is not actually a beast. He's a human man, but he's very grumpy like The Beast, okay? Um, and then book five is The Sea Witch, which is a MFF romance. Um, between Ursula, Ariel, and Eric. And the last book in the series, book number six, is Queen Takes Rose, and this one is a Maleficent and Aurora retelling, so a Sleeping Beauty retelling. These are so addictive and so, like, easy to fly through. Like, 
but they're so entertaining. They're so good. And again, I love the ode to the original tales or the Disney movies. Like I was obsessed with these. Next I have American Queen by Sierra Simone or the whole new Camelot trilogy. There's three books in this trilogy and they're all about the same couple. This is an MMF romance series. Um, our heroine in here ends up getting into sucked into the life of the president of the United States, falls in love with him, but he also has a relationship with his vice president and um, they all get together. It's an MMF situation um, that has to be kept a secret and forbidden, obviously, because this is the president of the United States, <laughs> you know? I absolutely loved American Queen, the first one. I think I gave that one four and a half or four stars. I only really recommend American Queen because I didn't love the other two books. The other two books were either three star or lower for me. So I really recommend just reading book one because it's so good. And I feel like it ends at a point where you're like happy with the book, you know? Um, but this is actually a Camelot retelling, which is so cool. I've never seen any other Camelot retelling in any romance book that I've come across. So very unique. We're going back to a Beauty and the Beast retelling. This is Entreat Me by Grace Draven, another fantasy romance favorite of mine. I just got this in the mail the other day from Carrie from Booked for Romance. Thank you so much, Carrie. We both love Grace Draven. And so she saw that I didn't have it on my Grace Draven shelf and she was so sweet and sent it my way. Thank you so much, Carrie. This is one of the most unique Beauty and the Beast retellings I've ever read and the most beautiful one. Lou in here, Louvain. Um, She is a widow and right now she lives in a cottage with her father who is ailing and her younger sister. Her younger sister has been courted by this young man who comes into the village and her sister ends up running away with the man. And her sister's like, uh-uh, like, no, no, she, I'm gonna follow her. So she goes and follows her sister, finds her at this large estate, this castle basically, and she ends up meeting her sister's suitor's father, Ballard. He is the cursed beast in this situation. When his son was born, so Ballard's wife, um, ended up cursing both Ballard and her son when her son was born. And so both of them have this curse on them. So it's kind of like Beauty and the Beast elements for both characters, like both guys have this beast curse on them, more so in Ballard than his son, because he's taking the brunt force of the curse because he wants to, like he's wanting to protect his son. And so this one is just so unique, so beautiful. This couple is amazing. I love this one. A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair very interesting. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling, um, which is one of my favorite ever like tales to read about are Hades and Persephone ones. I love them. So Persephone in this story ends up accidentally getting in a deal with Hades and has to spend a lot of her time in the underworld. I think she's like one of her tasks is to learn how to make something grow in the underworld. Like everything is dead there. And so he really wants Persephone to make something grow there. This one's very interesting when it comes to like gods and goddesses because um, they're kind of like put in our world, like gods and goddesses have bars, go to gambling clubs, like drink, like they live in our society, our world. So I thought that was a really unique take on the Hades and Persephone tale. Another Beauty and the Beast retelling, we have a novella. This is His Beauty by Jack Harbin. If you liked The Beast by Jenica Snow, which is another Beauty and the Beast retelling, um, I would recommend picking this one up because this is another case where it's Beauty and the Beast, but um, the Beast doesn't turn into a human. <laughs> There you go, I don't wanna spoil anything. This is very short, it's a novella. So um, if you wanna have a good old monster romance time, you can pick this one up. The Royal We by Heather Cox and Jessica Morgan is another unique one because this is a retelling of William and Kate. This is a romance book inspired by William and Kate. In middle school, I was totally into William and Kate. One of my teachers literally canceled class and all we did all day was watch the Royal Wedding on her smart board. Like, <laughs> like that was my era in middle school. And so um, this kind of like healed my middle school heart when I read this one, um, because it was like firsthand knowledge of William and Kate, but it actually is not William and Kate. Um, first of all, a difference is our heroine in here, she's actually from America, who goes to university in England, and there she ends up meeting the crown prince of the nation. <laughs> um, and they first off don't really get along, then they become friends, and then it turns into lovers. It's a very slow progression into their romance story, and then they have to learn how to deal with the media and paparazzi and having their relationship be very public and whether or not people approve of their relationship because she's American. Um, but it's a very, very, very reminiscent of a William and Kate. I have another Beauty and the Beast, okay? This is Stolen Air by Sophie Lark. This is the second book in her Brutal Birthright series. I feel like you could totally read this one as a standalone if you want to, okay? This is the romance between Miko and Nessa. Nessa is the daughter to, um, what's, what kind of mafia family, I believe? the Italian mafia, one of the daughters of the like boss of the Italian mafia in Chicago. Anyway, um, Miko in here 
just became the head of the Polish mafia. Nessa's brother or her father or someone ended up killing his adoptive father who used to be the head of the Polish mafia. So he wants revenge. So he decides to kidnap the sweet, innocent Nessa. He keeps her locked up in his giant mansion and um, plans to basically torture her. But uh, things go a little off the rails with his plan when he gets to know Nessa and realizes that she is the most perfect being in the entire world. This is very reminiscent of Beating the Beast. I loved it so much. You have this creepy house that's kind of like cursed. And then Miko in here, who's very grumpy, very beast-esque. This is so, so good. I got this beautiful edition of like a signing and it has um, beautiful um, illustrations in here. And if you can see like uh, Nessa's also a ballerina. So she dances a lot in the, like in the estate to like pass time. And he, he's like entranced by her. It's so good. If you want a Little Red Riding Hood retelling, I have The Witch's Wolves by Ellie Mae McGregor. This is a very short monster romance novella. So our heroine in here, um, she is running away from basically like a mob from her village. I think they caught her having a tryst with a woman in their village and people in the village are very homophobic and like are running after her with pitchforks. She's running away and ends up um, finding this cabin in the middle of the woods just runs in there, shuts the door and hides behind the door um, so that hopefully they won't find her. She does not know that people actually live in this cabin and it's the two heroes in this story and they're like wolf creatures and they're already in a relationship and they really want her to join them. I think there's like even some direct lines from Little Red Riding Hood in this story. I thought it was a very unique take on the tale. And the last retelling I'd love to mention today is Love in the Wild by Emma Castle. This is one of my favorite retellings ever because it is a Tarzan retelling. I love Tarzan. This one is very owed to the live action Tarzan movie, um, which is one of my favorite movies ever. Our two main characters in here are Thorn and Eden. You can like see them on the back, which is cool. These are our two main characters. Okay, so Thorn in here, when he was a baby, when he was younger, his parents I think were like a duke and duchess or something, um, but their plane ended up crashing in this jungle in Africa. And then I believe his parents were killed by um, like poachers in the jungle who were illegally like killing animals in the jungle, trying to find treasure or something. And so Thorn is abandoned and a gorilla comes and him. And so like Tarzan, he is raised by gorillas and it is years later, he is a grown man now, but Eden, our heroine in here, I think she is on an assignment for National Geographic. She's a photographer. She's going to go on this tour group into this jungle, take some pictures, but then they end up getting overtaken by some evil dudes who basically kill everyone in the tour. And right before they kill Eden, guess who comes swinging in on a vine to save this woman? <laughs> is Thorn. He rescues her and takes her to his treehouse and like claims her as his mate. <laughs> and there is one of my favorite tropes ever, which is the language barrier trope because he did not grow up speaking English at all. It is so good. I love this one so much. It is so underrated. More people need to read this romance because every time I think about it, every time I see it, I just swoon because of how much I love Thorn. But anyways, there you have it. Those are some romances that have retellings a part of them. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, that's okay. You can leave me, let's do a monkey emoji because I'm Tarzan. <laughs> um, but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.